to uh, examine what the graph uh, would be, and we're going to convert equations from polar to rectangular. So it's going to seem similar to what we did before in the last section, except we were converting points or uh, coordinates. So before, uh, which is just last section, and we were going uh, points, polar points, we converted to rectangular. But they uh, turned into, they, they were still points. They just basically got a different name. And then we took rectangular points and converted them to polars. The key with both of these is we were working with points. So what is different now? There's really only one word that's different. We're gonna start with an equation. So now, in this section, we're gonna go with a polar equation. We're gonna convert it to a rectangular. Now it'd be very strange if an equation turned into a point all of a sudden. So an equation is going to turn into an equation. So if you start with an equation, you better end up with an equation. And what do equations have? Uh, you know you have an equation when it's thing. All right, expression is probably a better math term for this. And one expression. So I'll write expression one is equal to expression two. And if you're in polars, the expression, the uh, variables are gonna be r and theta. And if you're rectangular, your variable, variables better be x and y. So again, we're gonna start with equations and end up with equations in this section. So if you start with an equation, you better end up with an equation when you convert it. Likewise, if you start with a point, you're gonna start out with something looking like this. You got number, comma, other number. Of course, they were r and theta, and then that turned into, looks really similar, except it was x comma y. So that's the difference between the uh, conversions we're gonna do now. So what we're gonna do is start out with uh, relatively easy uh, equations to graph and understand, and then get to more difficult ones. And we'll write down really quickly the four conversion formulas. So we'll put them, now at this point you should have them uh, memorized, either partially or fully. We'll start with the easy one to remember, the Pythagorean. Uh, the other one, we'll go with, uh, let's keep our trig on the right. So it'll be x equals r cos theta, y equals r sine theta and y over x equals tan theta. All right, so we're gonna be using these. So we're gonna graph and identify. <clears throat> oh, convert, graph, and identify. Convert uh, polar to polar equation into rectangular. Write the whole word. So we're gonna convert and then identify and then graph. Now a really fast review on some of the uh, rectangular graphs. This you've seen probably too many times, uh, and you're gonna see it once more here, is the line. Line slope M and Y intercept B. And I'll write the Y intercept as a point. It'll be X coordinate zero, Y coordinate B, and this is in rectangular, not in polars. The other common graph you're gonna uh, see now, th oh, this works for any uh, line that has a slope. What type of line has no slope? It will look like this. A number equals x, and this is a vertical line. And 
graphing a vertical line is pretty easy. All you have to do is make sure every point on the graph has x coordinate of a. So whatever number that is, that's where your vertical line is going to be. So if you go to graph this out, your vertical line right there, assuming a is positive, there's, that's what your line will look like. And if you looked at rise over run, so how much is this function running? Meaning how much does it go to the left or the right? The answer is zero. It doesn't go to the left or the right. And uh, it certainly rises a lot. Uh, doesn't matter what you put up on the top other than zero. Uh, it definitely rises more than zero. So whether I put one over zero or 100 over zero or infinity over zero, it doesn't matter. Uh, you still are going to get undefined. So vertical lines have undefined slope. It's the only line that doesn't fit in that nice uh, y equals mx plus b form. All right, the last common uh, rectangular equation that we're going to see here is called a circle. And this is the equation for a circle. It's very similar to the unit circle. With the unit circle, you don't have an h, you don't have a k, and r is 1. So what in the world is h and k? This is a circle with center, h, k, and radius of r. Now be a little careful. The number you see on the right side is the square of the radius. So if you see, uh, for example, if you see that this equals 4, your radius is not 4, your radius is 2 because you're looking at the square of the radius, not the radius itself. And if you were into graph transformations, this would be a horizontal shift to the right h, and that's a vertical shift up k. So that first one will go to the right h, and the second one goes uh, up or down, well, and now this one will still shift up. So it's a little funky, those negative signs right there. Look down here. This is really the opposite sign. All right, so let's get started. We're going to end up with uh, one of these three forms right here. I'm just going to use CIG so we're going to convert identify and then graph and the equation we're going to start with let's we'll start with an easy one pretty simple r is equal to 3 all right we want to convert to now <clears throat> Are we in rectangular or polar right now? So let's think about it. We got an equation. There's an equal sign. Uh, three is a number. So this single variable tells me if we're in uh, polar or rectangular. And I see an R. So obviously that's radius. We're in polars. So we're converting to rectangular. All right. How do we get an R out of there? Well, we're going to look back at our formulas. Now, one. Uh, warning about trying to use one of these right here. I do see an R cos theta, and I could uh, I could use that, but the problem is I'll be introducing a extra theta variable, which is not good. So what I want to do is use the equation that has R in it and no other polar variables. So this first equation has got an R in it. It's squared, but we'll deal with that in a minute. The reason I'm going to use it because everything else is rectangular. So I'm going to go ahead and write this down. x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Now what do I know? The only thing I really know is r is equal to 3. So I can just take 3. I could just take 3 and plug in that value for r right there. Uh, or I could square the equation. Square, of course, both sides. 
So I'm taking this equation and squaring both sides. So we got r squared equals 3 squared. And now I'm going to substitute out r squared for x squared plus y squared. So that's going to get substituted in the left side. So here is our equation. Again, we started right here with our original in polars. And we I squared both sides and uh, took out the r squared and substituted in x squared plus y squared using this identity we have right here. All right, so what that's uh, converted. So this is our rectangular equation. It's an equation. It's got an equal sign, and uh, it's in rectangular coordinates. There's no r's, no thetas. So now we're going to identify. I'll just write id for identify. Now, how do we identify this? There's really only three forms you're looking for. Uh, pretty much, if there's some square in it, uh, you're looking at a circle. Uh, the lines don't have any squared terms in them. So we got a circle. Now it's in a slightly weird form. I could write it like this. So it looks almost exactly like that circle form up there. And you can see what is the center. The center has an h coordinate of 0 or negative 0 and a y coordinate of 0 also. Now, a lot of you are going to see 3 squared, and then your brain is going to immediately want to turn that into a 9. It's true. It equals 9. However, I recommend you just leave it as 3 squared, because now when I look, oh, the radius is 3. The radius. Uh, you don't need to use any brain power when it's written as radius squared right there. So I recommend use the, you know, just leave the radius squared unless you're trying to do some other algebra, like if you're trying to solve for y, for example, you may need to square it, but I would leave it alone. All right, so we identified, we got circle radius three. How do you draw that? Well, you draw it just like a unit circle. There's only gonna be one difference. It's not the best circle, but this is all we're doing. The only difference is your radius is not one. So you can just write three, three, negative three, negative three. If you really want, you can now, let's see how not symmetric this circle is. It's got a lot more left side than right side, but there we go. There's our circle, the little tick marks on it. So we're going to go and graph uh, another equation now. Convert, identify, graph the equation theta equals pi over 4. Actually, let's pause for a minute here, and I want to talk about the uh, graph of the equation. So think about this, this circle graph right here, and our original equation right here. So radius is 3. This is nothing about theta. So there's no restriction on theta. Theta could be anything. What type of graph would this have? Well, we, we know the answer. What type of graph does it have? But another way to think about this radius is 3. If you think about one of those... Um, I think it's a protractor or a compass has a pencil over here uh, and you would rotate it around and draw out a circle and if you drew a circle that way your uh, you'd be drawing a circle in basically polar coordinates because you fixed this distance at a three and then you used your uh, and you can use a string um, to do the same thing, you know, make your string three inches, you know, or three whatever uh, centimeters, and draw, it looks like this is, yeah, draw your circle out like that. So that's a polar coordinate way to uh, draw the circle of radius three. So here we don't have any radius information, so we're going to convert first. What coordinates are we going to convert to? So we're obviously starting in polar because we have a theta. So we're converting to rectangular. Now I have a theta only, and I need to get rid of theta. 
So looking over here, what has what of the four equations has a theta? So already, first one's out, it's got no theta. It's not going to be useful. So I have three choices. Which of these should I use? The problem if I go with any of the, the cosine or the sine is I have an extra r hanging around. That's not good. So I want to have no polar variables left over. We're going to use this last one right here, tangent theta equals y over x. Make sure your y doesn't look like your four. Mine sort of does, but I try to be more careful. My four's got a, I try to make my four more pointy and my y doesn't, uh, I usually try to make it rounded and it looks like an upside down h. All right, so how are we gonna use this? So we're gonna start with the top here. I could, I could take tangent of both sides as long as you treat the equation fairly, it's okay. Uh, I could take tangent of both sides. So let's go ahead and do that. Remember you're doing algebra as long as you treat both sides fairly, treat them both the same. So we have tangent of theta equals tangent of pi over four. Now by now you should definitely know tangent pi over four, the value is one. And we just got tangent theta equals one. All right, well, <laughs> we're still in uh, polars. We have not actually used this yet. So now tangent theta equals y over x. All we have to do, I see tangent theta, we're gonna take it out and replace it by y over x equals one. So this is a rectangular equation. You could put a box around this. You are uh, done converting at this point. It might be a little tricky to identify and graph. There is a slightly better form. I don't really like uh, fractions if I can help it. Not a big fan. So how do we get the x out of there? We're gonna multiply by x. So y equals one x or y equals x. So that is a way more friendly equation. So let's use that as our rectangular equation. Now there's only three choices that we're gonna convert into. And we don't have any square terms, so we definitely don't have a circle. Uh, what we're looking at is a line, except it's actually really simple. So what is the slope and what is the intercept? Well, the slope, if you look right up here, you see the slope. Now I don't see a B still has a y-intercept and the b that's invisible is zero. So our slope is one, intercept the y-intercept is zero. And I'm gonna write my y-intercept as a point, zero comma zero. And remember, you want to write down your rectangular coordinates. So to graph this guy, y-intercept is at the origin. A slope of one, go over one, go up one. There we go, there's our line. So this is, should be very familiar in rectangular coordinates. Uh, I wanna talk for a minute about the polar view of this graph right here. So if we go back to the polar equation, theta equals pi over four. Well, what type of angle is pi over four? It's halfway in between right there. I could write properly. Oh no. Where did that go? Now there's nothing about the radius here. So the radius could be zero, could be positive, could be negative. So if the radius is zero, we'd have the point right at the origin. If the radius is positive, it's gonna be somewhere in this direction. How far out? I don't know. You could pick a million, a billion, trillion, make up a number like a zillion, uh, it keeps going. So the radius can get arbitrarily big, go as far in that direction as uh, we want to go. So we just draw arrow. And likewise, if the radius is negative, you go down here. Now I did say the radius shouldn't be negative, 
but when I said that, that was when we're writing down points. So the radius absolutely can be negative. If I asked you for this point on the graph in polar coordinates, I would prefer if you measured the angle this way, which would be negative three pi over four, and then you told me you know, how far down the radius you went right there. So if I was asking for the name of that point, I would like to see it named as a positive radius with negative three pi over four as the angle. Of course, you can go the long way around if you really want, five pi over four, go that way. Whichever way uh, is fine, but notice either, either way, your radius is gonna be uh, greater than or equal to zero. So if you were gonna write names of points, that's when I want your radius to be uh, positive. And if this is a little confusing with the negative radius, uh, if you answer with a negative radius, uh, it will count very small. Uh, it'll only take off a very small number of points. Not a very big deal if you uh, use pi over four and then one with a negative radius. I would still know what you mean and we'll give you almost full credit assuming that you actually named that point correctly. So those are the algebraically easiest conversions uh, that we can do. So we're gonna do the other problems are going to have a little more uh, algebra that we need to do. So again, we know that this is a uh, polar equation. Well, it's, it's an equation, obviously. We got an equal sign, but it's polar because we have r's and thetas and no x, no y. So convert r sine theta equals 2. Oh, this sounds really familiar. Look at that, r sine theta is also equal to y. So we're gonna use that. So we're just going to take this y and substitute it in for the on the left side. That's it, that's an equation. It's rectangular, there's no more r's, no more thetas, y equals two. And we're ready to graph this out. This is a, uh, a line. There is no slope, so it's a vertical line. Nope, that's not true at all, wow. This is a line. Uh, let's just go ahead and start graphing it. All right, y equals two. That's the only information we have on this uh, uh, all the points on this graph. So what type of points have a y-coordinate of two? Well, this point does, this point does. You may have thought about this point first on the y-axis, but all these points have y-coordinates of two. And every point in between that I didn't draw and every point uh, in between can just be summarized like this. So we have a horizontal line and now we write mx plus b, line slope. m is zero and our y intercept, I'm gonna write this as a point, zero comma two. There we go, we identified it and we got a nice graph right there. You don't need all those tiny little points written in here. That's completely optional. So starting out with polar, we're gonna convert first. So we got cos theta equals negative three divided by r. Let's scroll back up. We got cosine, so let's try to use this. X equals r cos theta. So we got a slight problem. My cosine does not have a r next to it. So what algebra can I do to get the r out of here and move it over to 
This side, we're going to just multiply by r. So we got r cos theta equals negative three, and now we're ready to make our substitution in. So I see r cos theta is x, so we're just going to substitute in. x is negative three. This is a line, and this one's gonna be a vertical line. Feel free to spell everything correctly. Um, I think there's an extra I in there somewhere, but that won't prevent me from graphing it. And if you want to draw your two tick marks, negative two, negative one, so there's a vertical line. There is no slope on a vertical line. And you could write the x-intercept. There's no y-intercept here, but the x-intercept is negative three comma zero. That would be that point right there. All right, so that's a vertical line. Next up, we're going to look at Somewhere in here. All right, so this equation, convert, identify, and graph. So this one's a little more tricky algebraically. So I definitely need to use the uh, cosine theta identity. So it's right there at the top of the screen. I'm just gonna copy that down. Uh, but we got a problem. I need a r, a radius in front of the cos theta. So I do not have a, I have a four, but I need a radius in front. So how do I get a radius there? Um, I can't just erase this and move it over. Uh, if I try to get rid of the radius, I could multiply by one over r. But this doesn't, uh, this is cosine theta divided by r. Maybe people like to see the fraction written more like that. Uh, but this is cosine theta divided by r, not cosine theta multiplied by r. So this is, it's not incorrect, but this is not the direction uh, that we wanna go. So this is the wrong way. So let's forget about that. Let's multiply by something better. Let's, I need to get an extra r here. So the way we do that is we multiply by an r. So r times r is r squared for r cos theta. Now r cos theta is going to be swapped out for x. So we're just gonna do a nice substitution here. Make sure you bring down your four. It was only the r cos theta that turned into an x. So I recommend when you convert, uh, you go all the way in one step if you can. So the problem here is I got a half rectangular, half polar. That's not good. So how do I get r squared out of here? Well, we saw that before. And the formula we use, x squared plus y squared equals r squared. So we're gonna take r squared and substitute out for x squared plus y squared. So this is rectangular, a rectangular equation. If the question was only a convert to rectangular equation, we'd be done right here. However, this is not the best form for identification. So we do have a circle. Uh, it's very difficult to tell what the radius and the uh, center is in this form. So what we're gonna do instead is, uh, it's called complete the square. So I'm gonna talk about complete the square for a minute. I'm gonna write out the way that you were most likely taught before and then write the way that uh, is a bit more useful and more generally applicable. So the way you were most likely taught before was uh, let's see. You know, I'm going to write out 
the better way, the more generally applicable way to do it. So we're gonna start with an expression. This could be equal anything, doesn't matter. I'm not gonna mess around with, uh, I'm not gonna modify the value on the left side. So what I'm gonna do is, this is completing the square, and you'll see why, I'll show you why in a minute. So I don't care what's on the right side. Um, we're only messing with the left side of the equation. All right, so we got x squared plus bx is equal to x plus b over two squared minus b over two squared. All right, this is always true. And I don't know why I wrote on two lines. This is always true, completed the square right here. So why is it true? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna foil um, the right side. So I'm gonna foil this term right here. So I'll write it x plus b over two, x plus b over two. And the last will be b over two, b squared over two squared. I just uh, squared that fraction. All right, x times x, x squared. We get x times b over two, which is b over two x in middle terms. We have another b over two x. Uh, b over two times b over two, b squared over two squared minus, copy that last term down. All right, these last two terms cancel out. Well, that's convenient, not a coincidence. Uh, this was chosen very carefully because it is in fact equal. So we got b over 2x plus b over 2x, which means we just got bx. So I just demonstrated why this uh, complete square works. All right, the way you were taught most likely was something like this. Let's see. And then you subtract no, add b over two squared. A y could be anything, it doesn't necessarily have to just be a variable. Uh, so now this, the reason we did that, this factors into x plus b over two squared. You saw it foiled out over here on the left. So the drawback with this is that we added something to both sides of the equation, so we actually changed the value on both sides. And then if you wanna, again, uh, you know, solve for y, or depending on what you're doing, uh, you could subtract this b over two squared back over. It's just a little more, a few more algebraic steps. And if you, uh, it only works if you start with an equation because otherwise you're not allowed to subtract uh, or add a number to, to only one side of an equation. So I recommend that you run with this right here. So let's go ahead and apply it. Our x squared and our four x need to be on the same side. So I'm gonna subtract the four x over to the left. I like my square terms to be positive whenever possible. And I'm writing my x terms right next to each other. So I'm taking uh, b is negative four. So b over two is negative four over two, which is negative two. So we have this, and I'm gonna take, this is actually the radius in disguise. We're gonna add it to the other side. So we got x minus two squared plus, I'm writing this as y minus zero squared equals two squared. I'm not writing four because I don't wanna be uh, tricked into thinking the radius is four. The radius is two. 
center two zero. It's not negative two. It's the opposite sign of what it looks like. And radius is two. And we go to graph this out. There's the center right there at two. And our radius is two. So we're going to go two in each direction. So two to the right, two to the left, up to down to those are the four points on the circle right there the, I call them the corner points and you just draw your circle this circle is not centered at the origin so sometimes you get circles that are not centered at the origin and that is how to graph a circle and do a little bit of algebra so hopefully the complete the square uh, is not too confusing uh, you're going to have to do it on uh, some of the homework problems, and there's going to be a problem or two, example problem or two in the book that might be good to go over. Uh, and you can always Google complete the square if you want more information on how to do so. And we're not going to uh, hand draw graphs in polar coordinates. So normally if I was doing an in-class uh, quiz, I, I would give you an in-class quiz where we actually uh, make up a table of values and carefully draw polar coordinates, but we don't have in-class quizzes, so uh, I'm going to skip the hand drawing in polar coordinates, which uh, your book will do a little bit of that.